the rod went through his brain. He survived. But the man who lived wasn't the same person who died. A 13-pound iron rod shot through his skull, destroyed half his brain, and he walked to the doctor and lived another 12 years. September 13, 1848, Vermont, USA. Railroad foreman Phineas Gage, 25, is preparing explosive charges to blast rock. He's using a 13-pound, three-foot-long iron tamping rod to pack gunpowder. A spark ignites the powder prematurely. The explosion launches the iron rod like a missile. It enters below his left cheekbone, passes through his brain, and exits through the top of his skull, landing 80 feet away covered in blood and brain matter. His crew watches in horror as Gage stumbles, falls, then sits up. Gage is conscious and talking. Blood pours from the massive hole in his head. He walks to an ox cart, rides sitting upright for three quarters of a mile to town, and greets the doctor. Doctor, here is business enough for you. The doctor, John Harlow, doesn't believe the story until he sees the wound. He can see directly into Gage's brain. Incredibly, Gage remains conscious and rational throughout examination. He loses vision in his left eye, but survives the initial trauma. Infection sets in. He's delirious for weeks, expected to die. Against all odds, he survives. Gage lives another 12 years, but he's a changed man. Previously polite and responsible, he becomes impulsive, rude, and erratic. The iron rod destroyed his frontal lobe, the part controlling personality and decision-making. He's the first documented case proving different brain regions control different functions. This accident revolutionized neuroscience. Gage worked various jobs, even traveled to Chile. He died in 1860 from seizures related to his injury. His skull and the iron rod are displayed at Harvard Medical School today, one of medicine's most famous cases.